What are you doing? Oh, uh, it's just an antibiotic. Uh, just. What do I need that shit for? Well, y you got a little bit of fuzz on your fins. Wait, that says human antibiotic. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's for people too, but it's penicillin, and penicillin is penicillin. So no you know, way. don't worry about it. No it's, it's, it's all, it's all way. the same thing. Okay, okay. I'm listen I'm up, just, Dairy Queen. Okay, you just... put that shit in here, and you're gonna be sleeping with the fishes tonight. I. I, I don't mean that sexually. That was not intended to be sexual. Okay, okay, that was a okay. threat. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Holy shit. You f***ing f***. You better watch your back, you mother. YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. A little bit ago, I did a video about my experience taking fish antibiotics to treat a potential um, exposure to Lyme disease that I had had. Uh, in that video, because Lyme disease is so weird and it doesn't always have symptoms, so I didn't even know if I had it, and it doesn't always manifest itself you know, with pains or, or fever or anything like that in any short order. That stuff can lay latent in your body for a while. Uh, it was very unclear as to whether or not, A, I even had Lyme disease to start off with, and B, whether if I did have Lyme disease, the, the antibiotics were efficacious against it because I didn't know whether I had it in the first place. The only thing I could really say in that video is that taking the fish antibiotics didn't seem to hurt me and that there were side effects that were what you would expect if you were going to be taking an antibiotic. You know, things going on in my gastrointestinal tract, you know, killing out my... Um, my stomach biology, uh, ecology and everything. So uh, that was as much as I could say in that video. Uh, prior to that experience, it had been over a decade since I had taken antibiotics uh, in the past. I know that there's a problem with antibiotics. I'm not one of these people I get a, like a cold or a flu and I'm like, give me antibiotics, you know, because it doesn't have anything to do with a cold or a flu. Um, so I'm, I'm not a big, you know, taker of antibiotics, but this year in particular has been really kind of peculiar because after that experience, I had two more experiences just over the summer last year, this is summer of 2017, where I, uh, I found myself having to, uh, you know, administer antibiotics. Uh, one of them was for um, a leg injury that I had gotten. I was out with my boy at a playground. I was fumbling with my phone. I was trying to coordinate with someone to meet up and I'm trying to put the phone away and I miss a step on the playground and you know when you kind of put the, your toe on a step but you don't put enough of your foot on there and you kind of miss it and your toe flicks down and the, the step just scraped all up and down my leg. I've still got a scar on my leg from it. Um, so it was a really painful injury. It like ended up swelling up. There was all this you know internal uh, you know, hemorrhaging of the, the tissue and everything. It was really painful. I laid on my back for a while with my leg elevated for like a half an hour or so, and I was about a mile from my car when that happened. Now, normally I would have my, um, you know, emergency sort of bag that I carry with me all over the place. Uh, but on that particular day, I was at a festival. I knew it was going to be really crowded, and I just didn't want to be bumping into people with a backpack. I left it in the car, and all my antibiotics, not my antibiotics, all my uh, antiseptics and, you know, my medical bag was in my backpack. So, you know, I felt pretty silly about that, but I ended up having to hobble back the, the mile to, to get back to the car. And all that time, all, you know, whatever grunge or grime was on that, um, that playground was getting into the wound. And I ended up getting a leg infection. It was a epidysis or epi something, whatever is like the, the clinical diagnosis, but a, an infection in the skin. And uh, the, uh, through the research that I was doing, uh, both online and also books that I have here at home, I always like to get many, many sources. Don't listen to this video alone and think that you've got the whole story. I always get many sources for whatever de medical decisions you're going to make. Um, uh, from the sources that I found, uh, it suggested that I probably did have this simple uh, infection of the skin around, on my leg and that I should take doxycycline twice a day for 10 days. And I took more of the stuff that I had taken before. This is the fish antibiotics, fish doxy, where it says doxycycline powder. And it just comes in these, these little paper uh, packets. It's, like, it's a powder. You mix it in with a drink or something like that. It doesn't taste all that great, but if it's juice, it's not that big a deal. So I did that. After three days, the leg infection just started coming, coming down. Because I'd hit my leg bone and stuff, I kind of was afraid that maybe I might have... Um, 
if there was like a little crack in the bone, maybe I might have like an infection in the, in the bone. So I ended up going to a clinic and having them check it out. And the doctor, while he openly said, uh, actually it was a, a nurse practitioner, but while they openly said that uh, they could not condone my having self-prescribed antibiotics to myself, they said that I did exactly what they would have told me to do and that I should continue with it. They ended up uh, putting in a prescription for me, which I went to go fill because, you know, why go through your SHTF stash when you don't have to? Um, and there was a mix up at the pharmacy. It didn't go through. Uh, so I ended up just not wanting to mess with all that. It was going to be probably a couple hours on the phone with insurance companies and everything. I ended up just using this stuff, which again reminds me why it's nice to be prepared for stuff. Because when I decided to start taking this, it was over the weekend, you know, and it's like no one wants to go in and wait in the whatever room, the emergency room or whatever over the weekend and like, you know, the pharmacy issues and everything that I, when I showed up there, they didn't even get the prescription. It was like a big pain in the butt and I had the stuff in my basement and it was ready to go. So that's just another reason why it's nice to kind of have this stuff, you know, available to you at any time. You got to take responsibility and use it, you know, properly, but, uh, but that, that, that's nice. And what I found out from that is that it worked. I ended up extending it to 12 days because after 10 days, it still seemed like there was a little sensitivity. So I did an extra two days. Uh, I just, you know, went uh, uh, off rope on that one. <laughs> uh, and I just extended it a little bit because uh, you, when you have an infection, you want to make sure that you take care of it because otherwise you're, you're building up an environment that, uh, you know, is perfect for disease resistant, uh, I'm sorry, antibiotic resistant bacteria and everything like that. So you want to make sure you completely wipe it out. You never want to stop a regimen part way just because you feel better. Um, so that was one experience. This stuff definitely worked for that. That was, that had it going on. And now I just have an awesome scar to show for it. Uh, the second experience that I had was with uh, Amber. She got what seemed to be strep throat, uh, like the, si the side walls of the throat all swollen up, these little white pustules all around them. I wanted to take a photograph of her throat, but she would not let me. Uh, but I have this, which demonstrates what strep throat looks like. Um, this is someone else's throat. This is not Amber's throat, but that's what strep throat looks like. This is exactly what Amber's throat looked like. And uh, again, we were just about to leave on a trip. We were going down to um, a vacation down to Tennessee. We were going to see the solar eclipse and everything. Remember the big solar eclipse over the summer of 2017 uh, in August? Uh, so we we're just leaving for that. And, uh, you know, you, you don't have time to like, you know, go and do a doctor's visit and everything like that. I guess we could have squeezed it in, but I had penicillin right there. Fish pen forte, penicillin. Um, and we just started uh, prescribing that for her. It took care of the infection. We did it for the, you know, the, um, uh, the recommended uh, uh, duration, I don't remember what that is at the moment, but again, you shouldn't be getting your medical information off this video. I'm sharing experiences with you. You can take them or leave them, but do your own research before you do anything. One thing I think is funny about this, uh, this fish penicillin is, uh, you know, this stuff is a powder. You could just throw that right into the uh, fish tank. That's a pill right there. What do you mean? Like, Here, fish, Here, you know, just, just eat the pill. It's kind of like, you know, that's, this is human meds. Now, I guess you could just put it in the water and I think it says dissolve it in there, but it's just, this seems like this is made for people to take. I don't know, but um, you got to make your own decision. <laughs> but it cleared up her, her situation. It meant that we didn't have to delay our trip or anything like that. We had everything. We didn't have to, you know, run over to the doctor at the last minute because we had the stuff in our pantry ready to go. And um, from those two experiences, I found out that at least these two from Thomas Labs, well, this one's Thomas Lab. Yeah, this one's Thomas Labs too. These two, they took care of the problem. They didn't sicken us in any way. They seemed to function the way that normal antibiotics do. So that's my experience. You know, uh, again, if you're making medical decisions for yourself and your family, uh, you know, you have to do your research and make your own decision. I'm just sharing my own personal experience. Is it possible that some vials of these might not be to the right, some standard and you could get a vial of this and it's like, a big mistake to take it. I guess that's possible. Uh, one person once said to me that tropical fish are really freaking expensive, like the saltwater kind, and uh, fish are actually somewhat more vulnerable to imp impurities in the uh, pills and, and whatnot. So anybody that is selling this stuff, there is a real incentive for them not to be accidentally through just poor quality control, killing people's really expensive aquarium fish. Because I, I don't know if you know any people that are into saltwater aquari aquariums, but a lot of those people are really into it and they don't want their 
like multi hundred dollar fish being killed by poor quality control. So I think just capitalism would keep people making these things uh, in, a, in a quality way. I would think that's my sense. That's how I made my decision. You got to make your own decision in your own way. So that's it. I hope you found that somewhat helpful and more conclusive than my last video. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.